Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be using some Spellbinders products to create three fun cards. Um, just before we get into the card, just because today is the last day, Spellbinders is having a sizzling summer dye sale. So they're like 40% off. The dyes that I use today are part of that sale. They're on sale for $16.50, uh, where they're normally, I think, $21.99. And then um, they just have tons, like just pages and pages of dyes, holiday, basics dyes, stitching dyes, like just so many. So I'll link that below um, in case you want to go check that out. So... I thought that this would be super fun. I've never done this before. This was a new technique for me um, to do alcohol ink on acetate so that I would have some clear butterflies. Um, and I learned some tips. I made some mistakes so you don't have to. And um, yeah, we're just going to get into it. So I am using acetate from Hero Arts. It worked really well for me. Um, you'll have, probably have to play around with whatever acetate that you have on hand to see um, what works for you. But I'm also using, instead of just regular alcohol inks, I'm using alcohol pearls. They just have a little bit of shimmer in them. And you saw me before, like, wicked shaking that thing up. Um, there's my Jen Shirkus coming out. Love you, Jen. Um, probably because I'm playing around with inks, and so I feel very Jen-like. Um but you have, you've got to shake it up to get the shimmer off the bottom. And then really, I just started playing around with the colors. So I started just dropping them on the acetate. And then I did use a pearl mixative, which is the like a whitish mixative, um, and put those in there as well as my alcohol blender solution. Um, I use that as well. And then I'm just going to use my hand blower, the Tim Holtz hand blower, to move that ink around until I am happy with the result. I'm going to do this one that you're seeing here in um, just regular time so that you can kind of see how I add to it. But for the rest of the colors, I am going to speed it up. I did find, um, I did this two different ways. This is way number one. We're just applying the ink to the acetate and then die cutting out of that. Um, and then I'm going to do it where I pre-cut the butterflies out of the acetate and then add the alcohol ink. So both ways worked. Um, I just learned a lot along the way, and I think that that's the whole point of trying something new is kind of growing as an artist and, and challenging yourself and coming up with ways to fix it because that's how you're, that's the only way you're going to learn. If you never do anything um, that doesn't like push you past your comfort zone, then you're you're going to be stagnant. And nobody wants to be stagnant. We all want to be growing and blooming and getting, you know, moving along in our art journey. So here I am, this is the largest die, so I was just checking to see that I had enough space to cut out that butterfly. And now I have sped this up. Um, I chose to do basically an array of colors. I knew that I was going to make a couple of different cards and I knew that I wanted to have a lot of color variation so that all my butterflies weren't the same color. Um, but you do whatever you want to do. If you're going to do what I did, just make sure you're paying attention to what colors you're putting next to each other. Um, so I did the orange, yellow, pink, and then I did pink, like this magenta color, which I'm totally here for. I love that magenta color. Um, and then a darker purple. In the bottom right-hand corner, I'm going to do like a pink, purple, blue. Um, but that I'm going to have to be very careful about my blue because if it gets with that yellow, it's going to make green. And in the top left-hand corner, I will do a green combination. But you can see when I'm setting down my colors in order to kind of create a little bit of a barrier, I'm putting my pinks, um, around the edges and my blue more toward the center to try to contain it away from that yellow. Did it 100% work? No, because they are going to mix in with each other. Um, but enough that I would have a large enough piece to cut out a butterfly that you wouldn't see where they mixed. Um, yeah, so I just, I thought this would be super fun. I ended up doing this um, so that they were more detailed butterflies. But I think that it would be really beautiful um, even without the detail with just the solid butterfly cut out and then you could place the detail layer over top of it. So almost like it was a stained glass look. Um, 
just super fun, and I totally plan on doing this again with other images, uh, maybe even a background. So getting into the die cutting, I did flip my acetate over, so this is the reverse side of it for the die cutting, um, because it is does have a different look. I learned very quickly in doing this first one, so I have a Platinum um, Spellbinders Platinum 6, that's my die cutting machine, that my go-to, and I just use my regular plates, um with this, like my regular setup for die cutting, but I did place a piece of cardstock over top of it to protect it. The first time that I die cut them, I ran it through once and then reversed it, and it did not cut out all of the way, okay? You can see that there are still some pieces, parts. For the blue one, it was cut out enough that I was able to really kind of work with it, but because I kept having to work with it, the alcohol ink started flaking off. When I did it the second time, this is the trick to get the die cuts to work. I put a backer piece of cardstock underneath it. And because it pushed the alcohol, the acetate with the alcohol ink on it into the cardstock, it was a much cleaner cut and I didn't have any issues removing my pieces. So put cardstock behind it. Also, I noticed when I did not have any cardstock, that it did chip off some of my alcohol ink, and the more that I touched the side that the alcohol ink was on, um, you know, bending and flexing that acetate, it did kind of flake off. So for the second way that I'm doing this, now I know I need that cardstock underneath it, I'm just going to go ahead and put it there first things first. So I'm taping my acetate to my white cardstock. I taped two pieces together because these were scraps that I had on my desk. Um, and then I am going to cut them out just of clear acetate, which is also a pretty cool look. I'm going to be honest, like if you were doing a, like a monochromatic wedding card where you wanted just a little something extra, um, you could do the clear acetate butterflies, or you could even just do the pearl mixative, which would give the butterflies um, a really subtle white shimmer, which I think would be beautiful. Um, endless ideas with this. So I'm putting these in place. I'm putting the the outside cutting edge and then the detail layer in and I'm taping them the same way that I did the first time. But this time I put the cardstock behind it and I ran it through twice. So one full way through, reversed it, one full way through and reversed it. And then I removed it and totally cut out just just like regular cardstock. I didn't have any issues with even the intricate parts, and this is an intricate cutting die. Um, I didn't have any issues with them sticking at all and was really happy with the way that the butterflies came out. So run it through four times, put cardstock behind it. That's my advice to you when doing the die cutting on acetate. Again, if you have a thicker acetate, if you have a heat resistant acetate, um, you might have to come up with your own kind of sandwich. But as a jumping off point, this is what worked for me. Now I'm going to continue to cut out several of these uh, just plain clear butterflies. And then I'm going to add the alcohol color to them. So I just have this backer that's the same backer that I used before, and you see I have that blue butterfly from the first round. I did end up adding more color to that because, like I said, a lot of it flaked off from me touching it. Um, but here, I'm really just doing drops of color. It stuck pretty well, like, flowing around where the acetate was. Um, it wasn't just, like, pouring off the edges. You can kind of watch it you know, flow where it's going. I did still use my pearl mixative. On this first one, I used the alcohol blender solution, but I found that it made my color too light and I didn't like it. I liked the bolder look. So if you're going for something more pastel, please use the blender solution. If you're looking for a bolder color, skip it. You don't need it. They will mix together on their own as they're flowing around the acetate. So we're going to go ahead and color all of these butterflies same way um, that I did before, just continually adding that um, coloring until I'm happy with it. And this is really forgiving. Like you, you don't have to 
um, really think about it. Just drop in some color, move on to the next. So yeah, as far as life goes, um, Peanut is on vacation and I miss him like crazy. He's on vacation with his father um, and he's going to be gone for 10 days and I cannot even take it. I don't like it at all. Um, I have, well, you guys know I have travel anxiety, but then obviously like you just constantly worry about your kids. You worry about your kids when they're home with you and then you really, really worry about them when they're not home with you and you can't constantly just be checking on them like a psychopath like I am. But, um, yeah, so I'm excited for him to come home. At this point, he's already been, um, they left Friday morning, and so they've been, um, gone a while. It is very weird being solo, like, because when I'm working, even though, like, baby, my baby Caitlin goes to daycare so that I can work, um, Peanut's always home with me. So it's very strange. Um, I was talking to my girlfriend about, um, like, how when you were, and, and maybe if you don't have children, then this probably will not make sense to you. But when I was younger and I didn't have any kids, like, all of my time was just my time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just had all of my free time. I was always uh, by myself. I could come and go as I please. And then I had kids. And then when you have children, um, you honestly wonder what you did with yourself when you didn't have kids because, like, it's just very strange to be, to be alone, you know? Not that I don't enjoy my alone time. I sure do. But it's just like, well, what did I... Like, how did I, what did I do before I had kids and I didn't have somebody to take care of all the time? I don't even know. So here, what I'm doing is I'm lining up and just figuring out what my card layouts are going to be. Um, this is something that, again, I usually leave off camera, but I thought it would be helpful to see with all of these pieces, parts, a couple of different layouts that you could play around with. Um, really happy with the way they came out. I love the color variation. I think that they're shimmery and beautiful. I think that they would be really gorgeous for like a wedding card. I had butterflies on my wedding cake. Um, here, I'm showing you this um, to show you that sometimes you have to change your game plan. So I originally picked a black mirror cardstock for the bodies of my butterflies. And I wanted to show you when I put them on the card, they just looked really clunky um, because these were so delicate and shimmery and beautiful. And so I switched out the black bodies for gold mirror cardstock. And I liked that much better. It just seemed to kind of elevate those butterflies to the next level. So they didn't just look like big clunky black bodies. And this is coming from somebody who loves a bold black outline. It just didn't look right. And that's okay. So I just changed my game plan and I'll use those little black bodies on an, on a different card. I did use the sentiments um, from the same collection. This is actually designed by B.B. Cameron, who is a friend of mine. I worked with her when I worked for Tonic and she's lovely and has a great eye for design. If you don't follow her, I would recommend. Um, and so I used the sentiments that came from the Butterfly Sentiments set that is from the same collection because I had it. But these sentiments are pretty general, so please feel free to use whatever you have. I used a Thinking of You, a Happy Birthday, and a Sending Hugs. I stamped it in gold pigment ink from Altenew, Um, And then I am going to do some gold heat embossing. Because pigment ink takes so long to dry, you can stamp it and use it as is. It's just going to take a long time to dry if you don't heat set it. I like to use this one as a base for my gold um, heat embossing, just because I think that it makes sure that my sentiment is solid in case I have any areas of embossing that don't stick. You may have noticed with my first one that I uh, 
I didn't do my heat tool, like, or my anti-static tool, because I was so caught up in the excitement of the card making, I totally skipped that step. So I wanted to show you, again, the proper way to do it. Um, and so I'm using my anti-static tool, and then I am inking up my stamp. I did stamp them twice, um, just to make sure that I got a good, solid impression from this gold ink. Um, and this one is the one that says sending hugs. I actually have a plan for this card. You guys know I don't normally mail my cards. Um, but if you're familiar with uh, Butterfly Reflection Ink, uh, their store owner, Vanessa, who loves bright colors, loves butterflies, loves all those things, has been having um, some health struggles. And so my intention is to send this to her just to let her know that I am thinking of her um, during her difficult time. So this one does have a plan. The other two I will probably just put in the store, honestly, um, to see if they sell it all. Um, I figure a thinking of you and a happy birthday is pretty general. Here I'm just going to go ahead and build my butterflies and then start building my cards. So I found that it was easier. I tried it both ways, putting the glue onto the butterfly wings and then adding the body or putting the glue on the butterfly body and then adding it to the wings. Um, definitely easier to add the glue to the butterfly wings and then it put the body on top. I did notice that I had to kind of hold these a little longer than I would if I was gluing cardstock to cardstock. Because I'm gluing cardstock to the acetate, I did have to just kind of hold them down there a hair longer. Something else to note, if you are using the second method, where you're just adding the alcohol ink to the die cuts, um, if your fingers are super sticky, um, it will... It, I'm not saying it will for sure, but there is a risk that you will pull up some of the alcohol ink color because it doesn't absorb into the acetate, it sits on top. So just make sure you keep any um, sticky fingers or any tape or anything like that away from it because it may pull up your color, just like if you were hot foiling. So with that said, going to build these cards. Um, the only other thing that I added was a couple of rhinestones just to kind of fill in some gaps and lead your eye around the card. Um, yeah, so what were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about alone time. And so like, I was alone by myself, like not working in the evening. And I, for the first time in forever, 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 was able to just sit watch what I wanted to watch, which by the way was Best Baker in America. I do like my cooking shows. I like to bake. Um, and I sat and I cross-stitched with the dogs on the couch and it was I was just there by myself with no expectations. Um, I mean, obviously Caitlin was upstairs sleeping. This was later in the evening. And um, so, but it was just me hanging out. I was. It was very strange. Um, enjoyable, but I'm ready for my, I'm ready for my peanut butter to come home. I do miss him. So, um, yeah, if you just to make mention, cause we're getting toward the end of the video. Um, if you are interested in that sale, like I said, it, the, today is the last day. So if you want to head over there and, um, check out what they have, it will be linked in the YouTube description below. Um, but you guys will have to let me know what you think about these cards or if you have any other ideas. Um, I do think that a scene, like a flat shaker card with this clear acetate alcohol coloring would be really fun. And so maybe I'll try to make one of those, especially since we're in summer and I would have the opportunity to maybe do something like more ocean-like. Uh, I'm totally, I'm, I'm here for that. I think that would be really pretty. I know that it was quite some time ago, but Jennifer McGuire did a similar technique that I saw um, where she did more of like a like a stained glass look where the detailed die cut was on top of the um, acetate piece. And that does protect your alcohol ink a little bit more because she used the backside. So there's no fear of like, you know, sticky fingers touching it. Um, but ultimately I think that I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that they came out. I hope that you guys 
you know, learned a little something and are willing to try a new technique. Um, just cause it's so fun. Like, it's just so fun. And alcohol inks left. I've never had to replace the colors that I've purchased of alcohol inks. And I've had them for probably 10 years. Now, granted, I'm not doing alcohol ink with every card that I'm doing, but I am doing um, some here or there. In fact, it's one of my most popular videos. If you have never seen that before, I did one where um, we do some alcohol ink backgrounds on Yupo and then add gold foiling to it. So I can link that at the end of the video also in case you have missed that one, but that was a really fun technique. Um, and I have done alcohol inks with regular alcohol, like the, I think mine's 71%, um, isopropyl alcohol and Copic uh, reinkers. So if you have those or any other alcohol reinker, that would work as well. The colors just maybe not as bold. So that's it. That is all three cards. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate that you choose to spend your precious time with me, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.